What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel, previews and vlogs. My name is Paul. All right, so today, first of all, it's a crappy day. It's raining outside, it's, it's crappy, but the caddy's still in here, nice and clean. Drove it for about two days, got had some bugs on the windshield and stuff like that, but still looking clean. Didn't put the cover on it because I do want to wash it even though it looks clean. There again, like I said, there's still bugs and stuff on there. So, anyways, that's not what we're gonna be doing today. We're not doing a car wash video on the Caddy. We're actually doing an upgrade on the car. Not a performance upgrade, but more of a convenience upgrade, comfort upgrade, visual upgrade, whatever you wanna call it. So, this car, this is my second time I've owned the third generation Cadillac CTS. The other one was a 2.0 turbo that I had. If you guys look at my videos, I'll put the link in the description for some of those videos on there. But this is, of course, my second one in this body style. And of course, as you guys know, this is the V-Sport. Both of my cars have had the analog gauges. When I first saw the digital gauge cluster that these cars have, I fell in love with them, where you configure them in different styles and all this other good stuff. So I was gonna do it on the 2.0, but I ended up trading out of that car. That was actually planned for that car. This one now that I'm doing a lot more stuff to it, performance-wise, it's all done pretty much, but I am gonna be upgrading those gauges. And I have them sitting right here. So this is a new digital gauge cluster that I got on eBay and had somebody program them. I'm gonna talk about that in a second here. Of course, the car right now has these gauges on it right now, which is these analog gauges. They've got the little stuff. They're not bad, they're okay. They have a little LCD display down there that gives you all the information. All right guys, so I apologize for the end of that clip there because the microphone that I'm using, which are these new little wireless microphones actually here, I got one in my pocket, which I'm not using now, is a Rode mic. They're wireless, they're awesome if it doesn't fold in inwards. They're heavy as well though. When you're using this, this is the actual receiver and this goes on somewhere in your clothing. I had it mounted here if you notice some of the shots and this thing kind of folded inwards, which was causing that whole issue with the sound. So I wanna apologize for that and I wanna apologize for some of the sh uh, video shots as well. I'm learning how to use this new camera, which is a smaller camera. It's actually really nice. It's a very compact camera. It's a Sony ZV-1. It's better than using a giant camcorder that I was using before, which was a Sony AX33. So I wanna apologize for some of the video shots. I wanna apologize, of course, for some of the sound on this video, but the whole video is basically on replacing these gauges. Now, I was showing you guys how the gauges look now to how basically we're gonna install this and how I got the install. Simple steps. Get some gauges, get them brand new if you want, gmparts.discountparts.com and or gmpartsdirect.com, either one of those two work. $5.99 if you wanna get them, I will put the part number down in the description. If you wanna buy them used and if you can find them used, that's even better. You save yourself about $100, $200, depending on who, who sells them to you. Just make sure you get the right part number for it. And then have Black Lacquer, He's one of my buddies on Instagram. He hooked me up with the basically programming of the, of the gauges. They gotta be programmed to your VIN number. Have him program it and they'll work. If you don't program them, they won't work right. You'll have the error messages popping up. You'll have a bunch of different things going on with them and they won't work properly. They won't even read the mileage on the car properly. So it has to be programmed to the VIN number. Once you get all that settled, which took me about a period of about two weeks with shipping and everything, get the gauges in and then you're gonna follow this video and basically step by step, take everything apart. It's a bunch of trim pieces and a lot of 17 millimeter screws you gotta take out, but it literally takes about 30 minutes for the whole process. It is not hard at all. So I'm gonna go ahead, let's get the gauges started. Actually, the gauges are sitting right out there. We're gonna go ahead and get this thing installed with those new gauges and see how it looks. All right, so we're gonna be using a quarter inch ratchet with, and I have a couple sockets here. These are all seven millimeter sockets, by the way. I have this extension here for hard to reach areas. Of course, you can just use your fingers and I'll show you guys when we're doing that install. And there's some thunder for you for today. A pry tool, you can pick these up at Harbor Freight. And I do have a small power tool here basically to get the easy to access ones. Do not use this on the hard to reach areas because they probably won't reach for one and you don't want to tighten everything up with this power tool because you may break some. So these are pretty much all the tools you need. Let's go ahead and get this thing done. All right, so first you're gonna start off by of course grabbing a little pry tool. Make sure it's a plastic tool. Don't use a screwdriver or something. You're gonna scratch up the little leather or whatever plastic on here. Once you got this pried up, 
use your hands to pry the rest of it off. It's only held on by metal clips on here. And then you can pull this straight forward. There is two things you gotta disconnect here. One is the ambient temp sensor, which on mine just pops right off for some reason. And also the proximity sensor or the proximity warning, which is on the opposite side that it's not shown here, but those are the two things you disconnect off of this grill. All right, once we get that out of the way, just again, just pull straight back. It's only held on by clips. Once you lift the clips up, you can literally pull straight back after you disconnect those two sensors. Then you're gonna find yourself with five screws that are pretty much in the edge of this. Now, I couldn't get a perfect shot of this because I had to try to take it to the windshield, but it was gonna have a lot of reflections. So the one screw is right here, right on the very corner of the driver's side. Then this one's like right directly in front of the steering wheel. Then we have another one right off to the side of the one from the steering wheel, right next to the center speaker there. This one, for some reason, is missing, but you should have it on yours. I'm not sure why it's missing on my car. And then the last one, of course, is towards the passenger side, right before the airbag module. So we're gonna go ahead and pretty much just use a small quarter inch and 17 millimeter, or seven millimeter socket, sorry, to get this one. Now, the problem here is, this is so close to the windshield in that slant, that I had to use pretty much a loosening it up and then use another socket to kind of finish this whole process here and then just kind of twist off on it and that was the best way I could, I could find to do this. If you guys see another way, go ahead and let me know how you guys got this one out, but this was just a pain. It fought me all the way because it was just on that very slant of that windshield. The other ones that come next come out actually pretty easily. Once you loosen them up though, on most of these sockets here, or most of these screws, once you loosen them up, they actually come out very easily. I usually just take the ratchet off and just use my fingers to unscrew the rest of the way off. They're, they're not very tight on there. As you all want through the whole car, you'll notice. Also, just make sure not to put a lot of pressure when tightening them back on because they will break very easily. Again, again, you see me just basically loosening it and then using the longer socket just to get it out. We do it to all that. Of course, again, this one's missing, so I don't have that. I'll finish that last one here. Now, once you get all five screws out, this whole thing comes up pretty easily. You're gonna basically just take right here, right where the vents are at, both hands, and pretty much pry up on it, and it comes right up. And then the only other thing to disconnect here is going to be that speaker that's in there, that center speaker, because it is only held on by a few metal clips on here, nothing else. So that metal speaker is actually pretty easy to you gotta push down on the little tab towards the windshield and pull right out. That's how easy that comes out. Nothing to that. All right, so once you get that out, you get access to two more seven millimeter screws on the top of this chrome piece. Now we're gonna have to get this out just to keep moving on for this. So we'll loosen up these screws real quick here. Take the one out first, and then we'll take the second one out. And then now just open up the little storage compartment here and you don't need a trim tool to do this, just actually grab on the side here and pull it towards you, straight out towards you. Same thing, grab the vents and pull it out. And you don't need to move the shifter either. Once you get the bottom piece out, just kind of wiggle it over the shifter and it pops right out of there. That is it. All right, once you do that, you're gonna expose another seven millimeter screw right here and another one that's up here by the hazard light that we're gonna have to remove out of here. So we'll start off with the bottom one here. Once we get that one out of the way, we'll go ahead and get the other one on the top by the hazard light right out. All right, once that one's taken out, next step is gonna, you wanna remove the little trim piece that is right behind the steering wheel, right here, this tiny little trim piece. On my car, this just kind of just falls right out. And there, behind there is another seven millimeter screw that we're gonna need to get out. So we'll get ahead and get that one out of there. And sorry for the shaky camera here, it's just trying to do this one hand and then holding the camera on the other hand. So once we get that out of the way, you're gonna to wanna to remove this trim piece here that holds pretty much your start button. So go ahead and just pull with one hand, just pull straight out and then 
towards the passenger side and then just let this thing hang there we just need to get this out of the way for now and then of course close the little compartment for the cue you don't want to be hitting that or damage that in any kind of way when removing all this all right next step is to remove this vent trim piece so by doing that we have to remove this plastic cover on the side all right so once we do that to get this trim piece out of here we're gonna go ahead and just pry right on the edge here try to get a good grip of it of course so that this thing doesn't slip out and once you get just a little bit opening you can just pry the rest of it out it's actually pretty easy it's just held on by a few metal tabs on there nothing more once you do that you will see the screws that hold on the vents right on the side there just loosen those up and this is when i use a power tool they're right out again be careful if you are using a power tool you don't want to damage or strip or break any of these bolts all right once that is out you're going to want to pry the tab right here for the vent over that little tab right there so just pry it right up over it once you pry it over pry the vent out and then one more time go ahead and pry this and the vent will just come right off that's how easy that one was Next thing is there's another seven millimeter screw right in here. You wanna go ahead and get that one out of the way. I already loosened it up, so I'm trying to loosen it up with my fingers here. Do not drop this, because if you drop this, you're gonna be in a world of trouble. The next thing, you're gonna get this seven millimeter screw out of this as well. And there's two screws on the very top up here. This is for this whole trim piece here. Now, we're not gonna be removing that, but it's gonna make it easier for us to remove the gauges with those screws out of the way. So we'll go ahead and take this one out. And then we'll take out and loosen up the two top ones up here. Again, do not drop any of these screws inside the dash because then you're gonna have to, have to take the bottom, pretty much the your knee pad out of there just to get to these and the airbag has to come out just to get it if you drop these inside the dash. So now again, this is just to, you're not removing that, this is just to loosen it up to get the gauges out. Next thing, we gotta go ahead and take off this top piece of the steering wheel cover. This is actually pretty simple. Just put your fingers right in here and pry up on it. Just like that, it comes right out. Now don't pull this because it's still attached to the trim that goes around the gauges. So just leave it hanging there for now. Next thing, we're gonna loosen up the two screws that are on the top of the gauges pretty much. There's one right there. And that's again, they're all seven millimeters and the other one on that side right there. So let's go ahead and get these loosened up. One and two. Again, I'm using a power tool. Be very careful when you're using these things. Let me get that one out. All right, last screw you wanna get out is this one right here. This is one of the last screws before you're able to remove this trim piece for the gauges. So we're gonna go ahead and just take that out of there. And that one of course fell in and like I said, that was just a whole video on its own. Once you get that out, the last screw, the top piece of the gauges will come out. This is pretty much just the trim piece that you gotta be pulling out, not the actual gauges. And this is why I said to remove these screws from the top here. You're gonna pry up on this right here and then with your other hand, kind of just pull back on the gauge and it should be able to come out. And this is again just the trim piece, which attaches with a leather piece. I'll show you guys here in a second. Once I'm able to get it out of here. To the top of the steering wheel cover. That's pretty much how it all attaches together. All right, now you're gonna get remove the two screws, seven millimeters again, that are at the bottom of the gauge right here. So we'll get those screws out of the way. And this, for this one, I did use my, of course, ratchet. I didn't use the power tool. Use the ratchet and of course use your hands because it is kind of hard to get in there. It's a tight space, especially with the steering wheel and the way kind of. Be careful, of course, not to scratch up the glass on your gauges, even though these are the old gauges I'm pulling out. You still want to be careful when you're doing all this. All right, so for the last one, I did use my power ratchet on here. Now, once you remove both of them, of course, there's both seven millimeters, you wanna put a towel right over the steering column. That's because you're gonna put the gauges face down before you take the connector out and you don't wanna scratch the plastic uh, lens on the gauges. 
Once you do that, there's one connector removed. Now, to remove the connector is fairly easy. What you want to do is take your fingers and press down on the gray area right here. Press straight down, and with your other fingers, pull up on this small tab, and this will come right out. All right, so now that we have the old one out, this is the new one. Now, the new one, if notice, compared to the old one, the connector, actually, here, let me do this to you guys. I'll bring the other one next to so it. So this is the old one. That's the analog, this is the digital one. So if you look at the connector, it's kind of slanted sideways there. Same thing, it doesn't have another connection. This one did. Now this thing, I think, is for the heads-up display. That's what I think it is. The connectors look exactly the same. I did see a heads-up display module or projector on eBay. I might try to buy that and see. I don't know if I would spend $200 to see if it actually works or not, but maybe I will. Maybe that might be another video if I decide to do that. Anyways, the actual connectors are different. It has the same amount of pins on there. It's just that this connector is a straight connector, of course, and that was kind of an angle connector. That's the only difference. So now that we did that, I taped off the, the hole for, or the plug for the uh, heads up display just so it doesn't get anything, any dirt in there and stuff like that. So just kind of keep it clean, even though I might use it, I might not use it, I don't know yet. But anyways, so let's go ahead and put this one in the car. Before, of course, we put everything back together, we're gonna turn it on, make sure that it works properly. All right, when you're putting this back in here, the connector, if you notice, it's kind of angling for you to put it this way. What you wanna do with this one is actually flip the connector this way, and that's the way this one fits in. And then you want to push down on it and push on the tab and make sure that it locks all the way in. Once that's on, put it in there. <clears throat> all right, guys, the moment of truth. So I'm not going to start the car fully because I got everything apart. I don't like starting the car with everything torn apart. We're just going to make sure that this thing turns on and that everything reads properly. So keys are in the car. Of course, my button's sitting down here. We gotta go ahead and just turn it on. Let's move this towel out of the way. Oh, there we have it. I did hit the parking brake, by the way, when I was messing with the car. Let me close the door here. Get the chunk. So I did hit the parking brake. One thing I do see, and I think that I have to drive the car to make sure that this is actually, actually reads properly, sorry for that, is the mileage. The mileage on this reads 59,379. My car, if you look at what I showed you guys at the beginning, has about 56,000 miles, not 59,000 miles. So, or somewhere around those miles. So I'm actually about, it actually has about 53,000 miles. So I'm about 6,000 miles different there. Uh, fuel is correct because I, that's where I had the gas. But let's see if these things work though, let's see. Vehicle info, phone not connected, navigation, no media found. Of course, I haven't been connected to it. Navigation, okay, everything seems to be working. My question is, how do I select this? Maybe the car, I'm not sure if the car has to be running for everything to work properly. I know that if the car is off with the other one, you can't select some of the stuff. So it's working, it's on. And honestly, it doesn't take that long to do all this. It does not. It's a bunch of just seven millimeter screws and, and, and panels that got to just pop out of there. So it really doesn't take that long. So I'm going to go ahead, put everything together. I'm going to fast forward everything that I put back together on here. And then we're gonna turn this thing on and we'll drive the car and make sure that everything reads properly. But so far it is working. Mileage is off, nothing else. I don't see anything else that's turning on, it's weird. So I'm trying to get focus on this camera here. I do have a new camera by the way, so I'm trying to get used to it. Every time I put my hand on it, it defocuses and of course focuses on there. So I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way, but it is working so far. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna turn the car off for now. get out of the car and I'm gonna go ahead and put everything back together so I'm gonna do that on a time-lapse here 
you guys of course know what you took off all the screws and all the panels that gotta go back i usually don't go back through the video on what i gotta put back together because most of us of course that are doing this have some kind of mechanical incline and know how to do it and know what you were doing when you were taking everything off so everything again it's just popping panels back on and putting screws back on the right place make sure you don't have screws left over if you do you miss a screw somewhere so i'm gonna go ahead and fast forward this as i put everything back together and we're gonna go for a drive to drive this thing and see if everything works properly Alright guys, so as we're driving the car here, look at that, it works perfectly fine, no error messages, it's reading everything like it should. Sorry for this, I'm trying to get used to this new camera here and it's going in and out of focus. I gotta figure out how some of these settings work. Um, I got a little antsy today when I did record this video and wanted to use the camera already. It is the Sony ZV-1. It's like a vlogging camera and like if you notice my video, that's what I do a lot. I do a lot of vlogging and then of course I do how-tos on the video on, with the vlogging as well on my own car and stuff. And I, I think this camera was better. It's also lighter and easier on the hand than my camcorder was. I used to have an A or I have an AX33, which I used to record all the time. But anyways, sorry for the defocus. And also, I do want to apologize for the lighting earlier inside the car when I was doing all the work. It was raining outside. It was dark in the garage. I couldn't get any light anywhere. And I don't have lighting for in the car when I'm working, which I think I'm going to start investing in some of that so I can get some lighting inside the car when I'm working on it. But there you guys have it. Analog to digital gauges on a 2015 Cadillac CTS. It can be done. It's simple, it's easy, and it does not take very much time, honestly. It, it, if, if you go from start to finish, I would say a good 30 minutes and the gauges are in. Just make sure that your gauges are programmed properly to your car. Let's head back home because this camera's about to die. I guess the battery life on this. All right, guys. So, got back home. Caddy got caught in the rain. It's been pretty bad all day. It's been pretty much raining. Just like this, storms, dark, and everything all day long today. I apologize for the low lighting in the car when I was doing this. Usually when I do something inside the car, I have the light from the outside because I only have two lights inside the garage here and they're not studio lighting inside, which I got to get something, especially when I'm doing things 
in the car. I got to get some kind of lighting in there to give you guys a better visual experience. So, with that said, again, I apologize for the low lighting in there. All right, so with that out of the way, real quick here to end this video, then I'll just recap. Number one, to do this upgrade, you're gonna need the gauges. So you can find them, try to find them on eBay if you can. I will put the part number down below. Just remember that the part number that I have has the capability of having the heads up display. So I don't know if I'm gonna do the upgrade. I'm gonna have to look into it. If I could actually do that upgrade, I know I'm gonna need the speaker grill or the dash that has the hole for that. And I did find a module for the actual heads up display. But I'm, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that just yet. I gotta look into that. But anyways, so the part number you're gonna have down there is going to be the part number for this digital gauge cluster with the heads up display, which is fine. Just cover the hole, it'll still work. Send the gauge to Black Lacquer. He will program it. Black Lacquer just doesn't do programming on just the gauges. He does them on the My Links. He does the programming for the Q system. So the upgrade to the 2.5 on there. So hit him up. The guy is, 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 is he's a pretty cool guy. Once you get the gauges back, and again, the turnaround time between sending the gauge to him, depending on how fast you want the shipping. I shipped it within two days. He got it within two days. He had also, so I, it took him a little bit longer because his wife just delivered a baby. So congratulations, Black Lacquer, on the baby. Beautiful baby boy, by the way. And, of course, once he gets the gauges, he'll program and send it right back to you. You send him the payment, he sends it right back to you. It's quick, easy. Then once you get the gauges, Follow the video how to install it. Just a bunch of 17 millimeter screws, a bunch of trim pieces that gotta be removed, and it's home free. Honestly, the whole process probably takes about 30 minutes. No more, no longer than that. There's not, I think you disconnect three things. We disconnected the speaker, we disconnected the proximity sensor on the car, which is basically that little sensor that beeps at you when you're getting close to something, when you're, when you're not hitting the brakes, and we disconnected the ambient temp sensor. But that's all, all that's all you disconnected. Other than that, you didn't disconnect anything on, so you get to the gauges, which you unplug those gauges. And everything works perfectly fine. You guys just saw after I installed it, how it looked. So that's pretty much it. That's, that's the whole install. It's not hard at all to do. It's just finding the gauges, but you could pay for a gauge if you wanna pay GM their price for $900 or whatever they charge. Or again, you could go to the, you know, Cadillac, or I'm sorry, not Cadillac, but the GM uh, discountparts.com and get it there for, I think it's like $599 plus whatever Black Lacquer is gonna charge you, which is like 250 to get them, in, to get them uh, programmed. That's what he charges. So 600 plus 250, you're at 850 for the gauges if you want them. Now, I got them on eBay. If you find them on eBay, I bought them for 400. So they saved me some money there because they were used. So they still work if they're used. Just don't think that just because they're used, they're not gonna work, so they still work. So that's the end of this video, guys. I hope you guys found this video very informative and you liked the video. Make sure you hit the like button. It helps me out a lot. Don't forget to subscribe and share this video as well. More videos coming on the Caddy. More videos coming on the Trailblazer. Hopefully soon I'll get some other type of car. Some other looking to get like a hoopty and do some kind of, you know, what if videos. What if he did something to the hoopty? We're going to get like a $500 car. Maybe sometime in the future. I'm not sure when. But there will be more videos on the Caddy. I'm still... Got a couple things I want to finish up on the caddy. So again, I hope you guys like these videos. If you guys are here for the first time, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, share the video, and hit the like button as well. I'll see you guys on my next video. Take care. Peace.